This is from 1682, it's on page 746. A uniform disk of radius uh, C equals 160 millimeters and mass M equals 6 kilograms hangs freely from a pin support at A. A force P of magnitude 20 newtons is applied as shown to a cord wrapped around the disk. For R bar, which is the distance between A and G, the center of the disk, equal to 3 quarters of C equal 120 millimeters, determine A, the angular acceleration of the disk, and B, the components of the reaction at A. So let's sketch what we've been given. It's a nice big wheel here. Rope coming off, so we can just say P equal 20 newtons. Here's point G at the center. The, the disk is pinned to ground at A. And the distance between A and G, R bar, is 0.12 meters or 120 millimeters. The distance between the bottom and G is just called C. It's 4 thirds of that, so it's 0.16 meters. I don't know why they gave us that relationship. It doesn't really matter. We're supposed to find the angular acceleration in B, the reactions at, what, at uh, A. I assume both the x and y direction. I'm going to take a xy coordinate system, Cartesian just as usual, and draw a free body diagram, a x, a y, weight w, and force p. Sorry, my wheel's not very good, but there it is. That would be equal to the kinetic diagram. which is the wheel with its dynamic results, M-A-X, M-A-Y, and I-L. Now something to note is that the moment of inertia of this thing since it's thin disk is one half M-C squared. C is the radius, so we can just write that as M-C squared over two. And Kinematically, there's a relationship between the angular acceleration alpha and AX. As a matter of fact, AX would be equal to R bar times alpha, which is this distance from the pivot point. You know that the acceleration at this point is zero, so the relative acceleration at this point is just a tangential acceleration. Because at this point in time, the uh, thing's not moving. Of course, that would just be the tangential acceleration anyway. We're not worried about the vertical direction. It's, I believe it rests, they said. Double check that. Hangs freely, yeah. Okay, so it's hanging freely. There's, we just started this process. All right, let's start off by summing forces. Uh, let's see, sum forces in the y direction. Well, let's see, um, or better yet, in the x direction. So ax is in the x direction minus p equals m acceleration in the x direction. Summing forces in the y direction we get AY minus weight equals mass times acceleration in the y direction. And then finally summing moments about A taking counterclockwise as positive. Why A? Well, because A is unknown, right? So if I could solve for P, that might help me get AX. And once I get that, maybe I could get AY. So let's see, this would be negative P because, of course, P is positive and negative moment multiplied by R bar plus C. That would be equal to I alpha, except that I sum moments about a point other than the center of gravity, not about the centroid. So what I have to do is add in the effect of the dynamic uh, moments. I've already got this dynamic moment, but I need the moment of that dynamic force. So plus the distance from A, <coughs> since that's the point I'm summing moments about, to G, where MAX is applied, is just R bar multiplied by M. Yeah, of course, MAY passes right through A, so it does not appear in the equation. Now, you'll notice that AX is the same thing as R bar alpha. So we could write the right-hand side of this equation as, uh, let's see, I, which is MC squared by 2, plus MR squared, right, MR squared times alpha. 
So I guess we can pull the mass out too if we really want to. Let's put it uh, in front. Okay, so now we should be able to solve for the angular. Is that what we need, angular acceleration? Yeah, we've been given P, so let's solve for the angular acceleration. I guess we already have P here, so. Yeah, okay, yeah, this will work out. So get the angular acceleration first. If we solve for it, it would just be the left hand side, negative P times uh, R bar plus C divided by this term, M times C squared over 2 plus R, well, it's R bar squared, really. I don't know why they put the bar on it, but they did. And so I think now we're ready to plug in the numbers. So negative 20 newtons times r plus c, well, 0.12 plus 0.16 would be 0.28. We don't have to write both. The mass, uh, let's see, did I jot down the mass? Uh, I did not, I forgot to. The mass is 6 kilograms. They must have given us that in the problem statement. Yeah, mass uh, 6 kilograms. So let's throw that in, 6 kilograms in the denominator times c squared, well c is 0 0.16 meters quantity squared over 2 plus r bar is 0 0.12 meters and that has to be squared as well. There we go. So what units will we get? Well a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared, so the kilograms go away. We have meters per second squared times meters and meters squared in the denominator, so all the meters squared will go away and we'll end up with 1 over second squared or radians per second squared, which is good because this is an angular acceleration, what we expect. So it's negative 34.31 radians per second squared. So there's the angular acceleration. Oh, the asteroid, that's why we solve for it. There we go. So now that we've got the angular acceleration, we can get AX. All we have to do is multiply 0 0.12 meters by alpha, negative 34.31 radians per second squared. Okay. If we do that, AX comes out to about negative 4.1176 meters per second squared. Radians go away for free. There's AX. Now we've got AX. Look, we can solve for AX, the force in the X direction. So let's take that and say the force at A in the X direction is P plus M AX, the acceleration in the X direction, so that's 20 newtons plus the mass, 6 kilograms, multiplied by negative 4.1176 meters per second squared. Okay. Of course, we end up with newtons for both, and uh, let's see, that comes out to negative 4.71 newtons. So there's one of our answers, in addition to alpha. We make a note over here that this is negative 34.31 radians per second squared. That way I can get rid of this. So we've got alpha, we've got AX. Now we need AY. All right, so AY is equal to the weight plus M acceleration in the Y direction. Now we've got a problem. We haven't calculated the acceleration of the center of this thing in the Y direction yet. Now they told us that this thing is just hanging at rest when we all of a sudden apply this force P. That means there's no angular velocity. Now understand that this point is rotating about A, which is right there, right? It's just moving about A. So this point would have a tangential and normal coordinate system associated with it. And the acceleration in the normal direction would just be omega squared R bar. But omega is zero. And so the normal acceleration is zero, meaning that a y is zero. So this term just goes away. And a y, the force in the y direction, is just equal to the weight. So that's simple. So the weight is mg is 6 kilograms multiplied by 9.81 meters per second squared. That comes out to 58.86 newtons. And so now we have successfully solved for the force in the x and the y direction at A, and we have solved for the angular acceleration of the body.